First fuel stop, I think it's about another three hour flight from here. You plumb this so you can uh, load from the side. Look at this. Dude, this has gotta be custom built trailers. See some big, big open fields out there, help them figure out a few efficiency things. We're up here, big old fields. How's it going folks, Mike with New Ag. In this video, we are actually going to hop in the airplane and fly to Kansas. I think it's like almost 900 nautical miles to get there. We're gonna talk with a custom spray applicator there that uses ground rigs to do over 100,000 acres. And he bought a complete new way ag trailer, has T60Xs on his trailer. And we're just gonna see what is making him adapt to the new technology. See some big, big open fields out there, help him figure out a few efficiency things. And then after that, it's gonna be a whole separate video, so keep following along. We're gonna to head to North Carolina into the mountains and see how they're using drones there to do mountain spraying and also fertilizer applications in the mountains of North Carolina. It's gonna be a long trip, it's gonna be fun, but I'm not gonna be back home to the family for about uh, three nights, maybe. Uh, depends how everything goes, but uh, yeah, so that's what's up. Let's, uh, let's get rolling. I'm gonna say goodbye to the family and then we're, uh, then we're out of here. Alrighty. Wanna watch me do my trick? Love you. Bye, bye. Yep, see ya. I hey, come at home trick, dude. Wanna do that Santa? Okay. Okay, ready to taxi here. It's gonna be about a three and a half hour flight to our first fuel stop. We got a little bit of weather that we gotta fly around getting out of here, but it's only about 30 miles long. Going west, should be fun. I'm ready to go. You ready? Ready to go. Let's roll. First fuel stop, I think it's about another three hour flight from here. Maybe if we get a tailwind, it'll be shorter, but mm. highly doubtful. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Landing. Sure. <laughs> you kinda got. Here we are in Kansas. We're at the hotel. We're gonna meet the guys this morning at their shop, just literally like not even, I don't know, 1500 feet down the road at 6.30. Central Standard Time. We got in late last night at about 10.30 their time, 11.30 our time. Brent and his son met us at the airport, very kind. They gave us his truck to use, so that's really cool. But uh, we're gonna get into the truck, we're gonna go out with them into the field and see how they do operations with the spray drones. If there's something that I think that they could maybe do more efficiently, or you know, if there's some issues, I'm gonna you know, tell them about it. But then we're gonna see why did Brent adopt this technology into his already existing spray business where he does over 100,000 acres with ground rigs. So I'm pretty excited to uh, see how this all unfolded. So let's get rolling. Oh, dude, we hit it just, oh my gosh, look at that. Those are his rigs. Let's go check that out. Yeah, that was perfect timing. Good morning. What's going on? You see it. This is what's going on. Good, man. Sleep good? Uh, yeah, I did. I did, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. This far away from home, seeing a rig. Look at this. Dude, this has got to be custom-built trailers. Or maybe they're mass-produced. I don't know. Impressive. Look at the totes. Is that like a 4,000 gallon tank? Jeez, huge. Look how big this thing is. That is a pretty cool trailer. That, oh, they fill it up there. I've never been this close to a big ground rig. It's really nice. Great idea. What's this for? Dad got freaked out with the drones landing, so I built a. Oh, okay. Card. Okay, nice. In case one of those things goes haywire, it's not chopping your head off. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. We were looking at doing a little bit different concept than that, but that's... You got that put up real quick. Are you a welder? Yeah, I took welding class, okay. welding and uh, shop class. Okay, nice. 
You showing them your modifications? I like it. You plumb this so you can uh, load from the side. Well, we got one coming, a one-way valve here, because there's too many times we'll contaminate this tank by somebody not knowing how yep, to Yep, yep, yep. So, so it's we, a one-way valve? Yeah, so it'll only go one way. So the when you're loading. Okay. Yeah, so this, if you have this open, yep. so if you have that open, and this open, and this is full, it's just gonna flow right yep. back. Yep. Because you're doing such big loads and so many acres, you're mostly doing all hot loads. It's a good idea. I like it. All right, I don't want to hold you up. Brent, you have been spraying for over 25 years, right? Yep. And yep. you average over 100,000 acres a year with ground rigs. Why did you uh, decide to adopt drones? Well, a couple things. Just, I think it's probably the industry is moving towards that. And then during the wheat run, we had a, a, a lot of airplanes come in and I watched the airplanes do their jobs. And depending on the pilot, you get good pilots and you get pilots that just want acres. Yeah, yeah. And so they're just flying to fly. Yeah. And so I thought, you know what? These drones are going to cover every inch of those acres yep. and they're going to stay at the same height all the way through the field. And yeah, I, ju I just thought, why so, not try it? Yeah. If you adjust the boundaries now, every line that you did, it's going to slightly change that because... Well, but couldn't we... It'll still have where we've already sprayed. Couldn't we just put a non-application area? You can try, but see right here, there's yeah. a row that was skipped. You, you can't do... You can only do each line, not like half lines. We're up here, big old fields, but we're getting it dialed in. We figured out that uh, max speed, it couldn't fly max speed if you were lower than 9.6, 9.6 feet. It couldn't go uh, faster than 39 feet per second. So went to 10 feet, now we can uh, go 45.3 feet per second. We're doing a long ferry, going over there, just making sure that batteries can keep up. We could do this field slightly different. So far, we're not having a problem. Yeah, once this thing starts running these long rows, I'm curious to see what it'll return back to home with. So back home, we have one drop off like that. It'll come down, but slower. At some point, it might be like 20 feet back home, but I don't think you're gonna see that big of a difference on, on this. Now, I just don't know how it's gonna terrain follow. Yeah, I don't like flat land. I'd probably run in hill mode and also try to keep those uh, vision sensors clean. That was my biggest gripe when they brought this drone. I'm like, guys, you made a drone that flies faster, carries more, but sucks at terrain volley. Why? And I just think that this is a model that DJI said we're putting aside because they wanted a bigger unit. And so they didn't put a lot of effort in it. So we definitely don't have a battery that is 100% uh, full. Let's pull this and see what uh, what we have when we come back. Yeah, I'll believe that. What's that battery at? It'll probably be about 80. But now it gets to run longer rows, so we should be good. Do you ever not feel it clear full? Oh yeah. Save battery? Oh yeah. Yeah, like back home, there's oftentimes we can't send it because it just literally doesn't have enough energy. Our fields are so small that it's turning a lot and consuming a lot of energy.
what I was telling your dad is technically these drones, right now we have 60 liter tanks in them. They're supposed to have a 50 liter tank when you're doing this type of work. The 60 liter is made for orchard where you're doing heavy gallons per acre. Yeah. And then our batteries probably wouldn't have as big of a problem. Let's just put the amount of gallons in that we're technically supposed to have, which is 13 gallons and see how much more the battery. Okay. Okay. That's 13, basically 14 gallons. I just want to see how the battery handles. So it is official. We have run out of battery, two gallon work, taking the 15 gallon tanks, but this product is very, very heavy. We're actually 17.9 gallons is what it's showing when we go to take off. So very heavy product, long runs. I don't know what to tell you other than the generators are not keeping up when you're doing two gallon work with the big tanks. Technically, we're not supposed to be using these big tanks with this type of application because they it's for the orchard kit. The orchard kit is for heavier gallons per acre. But of course, if the tank fits on it, we want to use it to do row crop because why wouldn't you? You get more done. So that does suck. All right, I don't know if it was on video, but what we're doing now is we are only putting in the gallons that we're supposed to be putting in, 13.5 gallons, to see what type of energy we're using on the batteries. I did one load, took off with the drone at 79% battery, and returned home with 25%. So already, it's going to be more efficient. This is very heavy stuff. It's actually showing that we have 17 gallons in it. We're gonna do a few runs at 13.2, and then we're gonna do some exactly at 15, not 17, exactly at 15 and see if we can catch up. I'm gonna take this and uh, see what it does. Alrighty, so it's clearly showing that if you do 13, it's gonna work. And now I'm gonna take off with 60% battery. Yeah, but I, I get to do longer runs. got wrapped up here i'm gonna head back i gotta go east we're going into the mountains of north carolina they're still wrapping up on their acres but we learned a lot today i am disappointed you cannot run the t60x with the 15 gallon tank and do two gallon work can't do it it consumes too much battery technically you're not supposed to be doing that but of course if it carries that much we want to do it that's what we do we want to get as many acres covered as possible but the 14,000 generators are not keeping up with two gallon work at 15 
15 gallons into the tank. Technically, you're only supposed to load it up to 13.2 gallons if you're gonna do two gallon work. I hate to say it, but if you're wanting to do two gallon work, 15 gallon tank, it's not gonna work with the T60X. So that sucks. And we're running the 14,000 generator, the fastest charging generator out there. It's just one of those things that um, after running it for three weeks, figured out that it doesn't work to do two gallon work with 15 gallon tank. Got to stay with that 13 too. Very nice open fields. So I just don't like it. If you do 13.2, you can get away with it. But if you carry more than that, it's not going to work. Help them figure out some processes of how to maybe build boundaries a little more efficiently and as well as figuring out the parameters that they should use. But they use the boundaries off of their John Deere. They basically took the shape file of John Deere, put it into their controller, and then it was bigger than it should have been through the DJI system. That's why I don't like that because you never know where the boundary is gonna be. So I showed them how to fly around the field, building a boundary like that, and then sending your drone into there. When we were using the John Deere boundaries, the one drone flew into the power line and got hung up. So they had to rescue that thing out of there. But uh, honestly, overall, it was a good trip. I wanted to see what people do with the new way trailers out in this type of terrain or out in this type of acres. The acres across the United States are so different from one side of the country to the other. It's hard to make one thing for everybody. That's about all I got. It's been a good trip. When we got to the shop this morning, first thing we seen that they already had made modifications to their new way trailer because they've been spraying for a long, long time. They have their own little modifications that they wanted to make the trailer to fill it faster, to load, all those types of things. They have a little pilot protection wall that flips up. It's all good. I wanted to give people a good solid base. And then if you wanna make changes, you can. And that's what we did with the new way trailer. And they've already started making their own modifications in three weeks. So it's really good to see, but that's all I got for you guys. Been rambling, I know. Hit that subscribe, give it a thumbs up. We'll pick you guys back up as we're headed to North Carolina to head into the mountains to show you how these spray drones are used to do some very gnarly terrain. We'll see you guys.